Oh well, guys, I'm back. Uh, so we're going to continue on with a discussion about TV circuits uh, on that Admiral TV and, and TVs in general. Now, in the last several videos, we discussed uh, circuits that were similar and in common with radio. Now we're going to be getting into stuff that radios don't have and that's mainly dealing with the sync circuits but before we go wholeheartedly into uh, the various different sync circuits and uh, wave uh, forming circuits uh, deflection circuits and stuff we need to do some basics first and that is dealing with uh, resistors and capacitors because uh, these waveforms that are produced to produce a sink and to produce a raster is basically it's a it's a sawtooth waveform and we're going to show you how we get that um, we actually get that from actually a capacitor and we usually add a resistor in there for adjustment of the time constant so, start off with, um, I thought about talking about charge on a capacitor, uh, how it's figured, and if anybody wants to know, I didn't really write it down or anything, but the, the charge on a capacitor is uh, in volts is equal, E equals voltage equals Q which is coulombs over capacitance uh, divided by capacitance Q is a amount of charge um, one coulomb equals the same amount of charge or electrons as, that it would take that you would get if you measured one amper flow past a point in one second a equals one coulomb. This information is not extremely vital uh, in our discussion but just for your own information if you want to understand it a little better. Now we're going to look at a couple waveforms to start out with and I'm not too sure how long uh, video this will be or how far we'll get. Um, it all depends on you know the, both the length of the video as well as uh, you know where I feel like uh, I might start overwhelming some of you so anyway and I, I, I did this pretty simply we're not at this point going to put too much values um, other than maybe like 10 volts on a battery but if we had a circuit like this where we had a switch a capacitor and a resistor and we flipped that switch closed and started current flow through this circuit uh, at the very instant we flip this switch, we'll have zero volts on the capacitor, assuming that it's, you know, fully discharged cap, and that's what we're assuming. There'll be zero volts here, and the full 10 volts will be across this resistor. The instant that we flip the switch, but shortly, very shortly after that, the capacitor starts charging. And as time goes on, the capacitor will continue to charge and it charges in the reverse or opposing to the battery voltage. That's why a capacitor ends up when it's fully charged blocking DC because we have positive on this side and negative on this side that's how the capacitor is going to charge but depending on which way you want a current flow whether it's positive or negative or negative or positive doesn't matter uh, it will actually oppose it. If we take, say, negative to positive flow, well, the battery's wanting to flow this direction. We got a negative here, but then when the capacitor gets charged on it, it wants to flow back this way. So it's in opposite direction. So as that capacitor starts charging, it actually starts opposing the voltage to of the battery, which actually slows the process down in time for that capacitor to charge up. 
Consequently, we get a curve that's very similar to this as with time and voltage. At the very instant, we flip the switch and for a short duration past that point, the capacitor charges fairly quickly. But as time goes on, it starts slowing down, slowing down, slowing down until we get up to a certain point. In theory, um, if everything was perfect and everything, the capacitor could actually get to full charge. But actually, technically, it never does. For all practical purposes, we consider it full charge that it will actually. You know, there's going to be a point in time that no matter how long after that point, whatever voltage or charge that's on this capacitor, is, that's going to be it. It You will never see really any more increase uh, charge on that capacitor. But it will get very similar to this 10 volts. So for practical purposes, and rounding off the math, we say that it gets to 10 volts at that point, the circuit stops. But this curve actually will never reach ever to 10 volts. Now, for those math fanatics out there, if you want to know what this curve is, it's natural log curve. That's what it's actually following. And Anybody who knows anything about natural log curve, it never gets to a certain point. It will come out and then it will flatten and stay flat but never crossing, say in this case, the 10 volts. So anyway, early on it charges fast, then it starts slowing down. Now, the amount of time this takes is in relation to what is known as the RC time constant which is the resistance times the capacitance now there's always been a lot of I see a lot of debate on all various uh, areas on the internet and stuff people not show, knowing exactly what the math is to the RC time constant so I went ahead and wrote it down and hopefully well, we'll just kind of go through this RC time constants it's resistance times capacitance if you have resistance in ohms and capacitance in farads, farads then your time will be in seconds so if I take you know a 1 ohm resistor and a 1 farad resistor it will take one second to charge that capacitor, the max is going to get charged. And it works the opposite direction on discharge. Uh, it would take one second for it to get fully discharged. If I got resistance in mega ohms and capacitance in microfarads, then again, time is in seconds. So, you know, you have one mega ohm, one microfarad, you get one second. If I have resistance in ohms and capacitance in microfarads, the time will be in microseconds. If I have resistance in mega ohms, capacitance in micro microfarads or picofarads, the time again is in microseconds. So, four different ways of figuring it, um, four different values on there. We'll just kind of pause right there. I'll hopefully we can get all that into the screen um, so that you can kind of look at it and pause the video if you want and write it down. That's your time constants and that is what determines not, you know, this part of the portion as opposed to this part, but it determines how long it gets to this point. How much time passes to get to full charge. Now, <clears throat> this is also known as integrator. Right here. Integrate when we're charging a capacitor. 
when we're discharging we're actually going to be looking at the voltage drop on this resistor so what we do is we build up the circuit and change it just a little bit and add a, a shorting switch once the capacitor is fully charged and we're not able to charge anymore we break the switch here and close it here that puts the capacitor across the resistor so now the capacitor is going to discharge through that resistor still if the time constant is the same values as what we had in the first circuit then the time it takes to discharge will be equal to the time it takes to charge but this time the curve looks like this and it starts dropping off dropping off dropping off and dropping off and again it will never actually get to zero but in practical purposes we consider it does this follows for the math people this is the exponential curve e to x here uh, these two uh, natural log and e of x are inverse functions of each other so that's why the curves look very similar just flipped now this is called a differential difference differential curve or differential or differentiating circuit because we're actually looking at what the resistor is doing, the discharge of the capacitor through the resistor. We're measuring the voltage across the resistor basically to get the curve. Again it follows the same time constants. It's still just a RC circuit. Now, for right now we'll be more at this point we're going to be paying attention more to this curve but we're going to be looking at this lower area right here. This is what's important. This is where it's fairly linear and that's what we want. We want a fairly linear curve for our uh, scanning curves for our deflection circuits. If there's too much curve in it then your linearity is off. As long as this is fairly linear or straight then your linearity is good we don't worry about up in here we'll just be worrying about this now before we go any further I thought I'd show you these this circuit here capacitor resistor is in a TV and it's known as the either discharge or waveforming capacitor uh, along with its resistor and I thought I'd flip over here to the screen and Give me a moment here to kind of get myself positioned and zoom in. We'll look at the vertical first. There we go. Now, let's bring this down just a hair. All right, right there. This capacitor and resistor is the same thing that we've been talking about. It's the time constant across this, the charging of this capacitor that produces our uh, slow rise that we get in a saw tube. Drops off, goes up, drops off. It's this part right here going up. And that's what creates it right there the uh, capacitor charges the 8200 ohm resistor is in series with it to give it the right time constant needed for what we're wanting to do uh, basically how this works just in a general sense we zoom out just a hair we're not going to go in depth we'll go in depth later on this but give you a basic idea we have B plus coming up this line through the height control and it's you know it's not uh, strange that the height controls here it's there for a reason the height control determines what's going on with the charge and discharge or the charge rate 
and, and the amount of charge that's going to be on this capacitor by adjusting this resistor so that in, adjusts our height. Uh, the more charge we get on there as it ramps up, going up, the higher it gets, the more voltage it can attain, then the taller the picture is. The less voltage, the shorter the picture is. So that's why the height is right in this, this circuit here. But to charge, it goes through, comes in and goes through this uh, height control, through this one mega ohm resistor here, and then starts charging the capacitor. As you see, we go back to ground. Now, why ain't it going over here? Well, the reason is, is um, the way these oscillators work, this is a blocking transformer, these are um, biased and extreme negative. So for, for the most part of the time, this oscillator or this tube is in cutoff. And while it's in cutoff, this is charging up. At some point, though, this grid will go just enough positive to conduct that tube. And the tube will start conducting. When it does, then it gives a path back through for this to discharge. We'll get into more exactly how it works, but that's just in the nutshell. The main thing I wanted to show you is where in a real TV is that capacitor resistor at, and mainly the uh, capacitor, but it's right here in the vertical. Now we'll flip down here to the horizontal, and get right down here. There's your, what is known as discharge forming capacitor. In this case, um, basically it's the 22K in the cap, along with the 33K. These two make a voltage divider to charge that cap. And uh, also set the time constant. It's going to be a lot different time constant for this. You notice this is a thousand picofarad, as opposed to the vertical which is a 0 0.047 cap right there it is and the reason is is the two frequencies vertical runs at 60 cycles horizontal runs at 15,750 cycles so capacitors are going to be different value to have different time constants to produce the same basic sawtooth so anyway now we got to back out of here. Now, I need to, again, like I said, we'd be looking at this part of it. So, I'm going to pause the video here and redraw some stuff on here for you to look at and give you... Um, uh, some different graphs and show you some different circuits uh, looks like we're good for time and we'll start looking at uh, some more inter uh, other information on how we're going to make use of this and different things of that nature so I'll pause right now okay things redrawn now we're going to look at something a little bit different still capacitor and resistor charging and discharging. But in this case we're actually going to uh, start flipping our switch back and forth in our circuit from on and off, on and off basically producing a square wave uh, pretty much a symmetrical square wave uh, even though my drawing's not the best uh, these would be about the same size so we'll be going from zero volts to a certain particular value on for a little bit and sh shut it off back to zero for the same amount of time on for the same amount of time off for the same amount of time and so forth now <coughs> when we look at the integrator or the capacitance charge we see that it basically produces kind of a triangle shaped wave it charges up 
then discharges, charges up, and discharges. One thing to notice is that it never goes below zero. It stays in the same polarity, you know, above zero, as our square wave does. If we look at the voltage on the resistor, though, or also known as the differentiator voltage, we see that it spikes up and then it starts slowly dropping to zero as that capacitor charges up. But then when we set the switch off, the capacitor goes discharge back through it. It's in reverse order. So it spikes down negative voltage of the same level and then slowly drops off until we get back to zero the capacitor is fully discharged. At that point we flip our switch back on and we repeat the process. Spike up, slowly drop down to zero, shut the switch off, spike down and up. Now if you adjust, leave the resistor the same value and adjust the capacitance, you will adjust the time constant. As you increase the time constant the capacitor don't have as much time to charge so it will start kind of coming up like this and like this and like this and like this not near as much charge and the resistor will start appearing more and more like the initial square wave if you increase the capacitance size in other words and uh, basically shorten the time constant <coughs> or change the time constant by increasing the capacitor uh, uh, decrease the capacitor size, I'm sorry then what you end up with is something like this and more like this until it gets actually to a point where this is always at zero there's a, a point where uh, in between time constants in between certain values of capacitance that you can actually get this to come up drop down like this but still have some voltage on it before it flip, the switch is flipped off but just by changing the size of the capacitor so if I increase the capacitor size we get a much lower charge rate something towards more like this and this and then on the resistor we'll see something more like this and dropping down same way with this down here more like this increase the capacitor some then it won't be as pronounced this will increase some in the charge this will drop down some increase the capacitor even more it gets more like this wave where it's more like a triangle wave and this gets this weird spiky wave to it now what can we do with this let's look at some more circuits because the main thing we're interested in is as much linear as we possibly get and the other thing is we want a sawtooth, not so much a triangle wave. This is more like a triangle wave in its appearance. We want more something that comes up. You know, in a perfect world, we'd want something like this. Yeah, that's really terrible drawing. Straight up, don't. Straight up don't. That's what we would like to have. Well there we can get pretty darn close. Let's look at this circuit here. Now what we have done is we've got a two position switch here. We've got a 0.05 microfarad cap and a couple resistors. A 1k and a 10k. Basically in the charging circuit where it's switched to right now we're going to charge this capacitor through this resistor since 
the resistor's a bigger value than this resistor. This is a fairly large value, fairly large value of capacitance. It's going to be a slow charge. It's going to gradually go up. And then at some point, we'll flip the switch. Let's look at the charge first. And we get something like this. It just goes up nice and slow. Still has a little bit of round to it, but it's going to be relatively linear up until to a point. At this point, we're going to flip that switch from A to B. So we'll flip this switch from A to B at a point, and what we'll end up with is something like this. Same circuit, except now we've flipped it to B, but now we've got a different uh, resistor size, 10 times smaller for the discharge path. And what that ends up doing is we get this. When we're charging through the 10K, it comes up nice and slow, but when we flip it off, since it's dropping through a 1K, a much smaller, 10 times smaller resistor, it drops off real fast. At some point, we're going to stop. And then we're going to start charging again. And then we'll flip the switch the other way again and discharge. And basically, really, this is what we're looking for. Um, we can do a little bit of arranging of values of capacitors and resistors to even get this even more linear. We can actually uh, do some adjustment. That's what your linearity adjustment is. It'll adjust a little bit of this to uh, get it more flattened out. But this basically is what we're looking for. This is a sawtooth that we're looking for that will then go through our, our uh, amplifier tube and then on out to our deflection coils or uh, deflection plates of electrostatic, either one. But we'll, in the next video, we will go over, uh, we'll start getting into how we do this with an oscillator tube, an oscillator circuit, and how this works. How do we do this charging and then discharging, charging, discharging but we needed to learn how we could actually create this and it, it's all created again basically by a capacitor that's our forming right there our discharge capacitor or forming capacitor that allows us to have our sawtooth waveform so on the next video we'll go into that um, yeah, probably in a couple, three or four days. Um, and in the meantime, there'll be another video coming up on the, uh, the RCA radio, uh, the Radiola 61-5. And I've got the chassis stripped down and cleaned up and uh, stuff. So, and we'll get ready. We'll start doing the initial putting it back together and do the wiring and stuff on it so I uh, think this is enough information for you and I want to thank you uh, uh, for watching I want to thank you guys for your comments and thank you for uh, my new subscribers so if you uh, like this video just give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel or uh, just a viewing for the first time or just seen a few of my videos, if you like what you see, you know, I do theory and I do um, both TV and radio as well as I do restorations and video of those. So please subscribe. Um, We'll be getting into a lot of interesting circuitry on this TV. So, we'll see you guys on the next video. And I'll leave you with this. So, thanks again for watching.